everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and it's Triple Play Day. And I'm here with Natalie and Misty and we have some exciting things to share with you all based on the Periwinkle template. I know this looks really tiny. There's three different sizes, but we love this template and we feel like, you know, if a template is good for one thing, that's great. But if it can do lots of things, it's even better. But here's the news. We made a leg for the periwinkle template. So it is actually leg day and you don't need to even use the papers anymore. Exactly, so exciting. Right. You can it's stay in so your amazing. chair for this one. <laughs> you can stay in your chair for this leg day. So uh, Missy, I believe we're gonna start with you. All right, let's do it. All right, so this is my quilt. It's pretty simple. It's just using the mini periwinkle and our new mini periwinkle leg. So this is more of a baby size, but it's just so happy and it's cute. It's really happy. Yes, I just I love that background. I know. I love it too. I think it's just so, so fun. So let me show you how to make this. You are going to need two packages of five inch squares. And I use Besties by Tula Pink for free spirit. You're also going to need two and three quarter yards of background fabric and your two little templates, the mini periwinkle and the leg. And then for your backing fabric, you need three and a quarter yards. So let me show you how to make it. So to begin with, we can take one of our five inch squares and we can cut out our little periwinkle shapes. And so you can- And this takes two charms, right? Yep, two charm packs to okay. get this size. Because I was just thinking Hillary would like a uh, king size of this. And yeah. in my mind, I'm doing the mental math. How you many know? you would need? How many charm packs will I need? <laughs> Quite <laughs> a few, about probably about eight. For or a, two layer kits, two, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so you can cut this into fourths if that makes it easier for you, but I just like to line up the big corner of my periwinkle template with the big corner, but I am gonna leave enough room to trim off these pinks. Oh, that's interesting. I always fold mine. Oh, no, I fold mine into I, I, I fold it too, but I find that it shifts on this little like one. This. Does and, it? And then it gets weird. Uh oh. So I don't actually like to do that on the little, but I'll do it for you. Well, what if because you, what you, what if like you just it. press it? If like, you wanna press it, that's fine. And then you're cutting all at the same time. Yeah, I didn't have any. I didn't have any shifting. I had some on that got a little wonky on yeah. the little guys, so I just decided. Yeah, and when they're tiny, you really don't want them to be wonky it, at all. Exactly. Well, and there isn't a ton of wiggle room on this. There's you know? not. It's made to be accurate. Well, and I love. I mean, look at your waist. Yeah, it's, it's so like, small. Could I make a bird beak with that? Maybe. Maybe. But probably not. You could try if you <laughs> wanted. If you're into like art quilting, there you go. Little all tiny those little pieces. Fabric mosaics can be good for something. All right, and so then we're just gonna cut, make sure you cut this little notch off the bottom as well. It's tempting to leave it, but you'll be glad you got rid of it. Yep. And so that is good to go. And so from your background, you're gonna cut three and a half inch strips. I have that ready to go here. And so the thing that you wanna keep in mind when you're working with the leg is you actually need opposite directions. And if you're working with a print background like I have here, mm -hmm. You have to pay attention. The easiest way in my mind to do this is to just cut it on the fold. Leave it folded. Yep, exactly. You automatically get one of each direction. Exactly. And if you fold it in half like that, you're gonna get four. Exactly. And so for e each block, you actually need eight. So this makes it go really quick. And so I'm just gonna set this straight edge along one side here and make my first cut. And then I can turn And you'll this. notice she's cutting all those notches. Misty did quite a bit of testing on this leg I to make really sure that it worked right. To try and make and, it accurate. Uh, and the notches really helps it line up. So I think that's really a there great There we go. And then so let's open addition. this because let's talk about that notch a little bit. So when you're looking at the template, you'll notice this little flat edge that's the bottom of your periwinkle. And this little notch that's on the leg always matches up with that one. So whether it's going this way or you flip it over, it's always gonna match up there. Okay. So then let's put these in piles so that they're the same. And then we know which side is which and we need to make one more cut here. And I do love things when you can cut a strip and then just, you know, that, that initial cut is both sides, but then you're only cutting from one side all the yes. way down, which and I then love. I think I flipped that over, there we go. And I was like, it should match. We'll make one more cut. And of course you would just continue down your whole strip with like this and get that little notch out of the way. And then separate your piles. 
because this does now, matter. Here's, here's actually a little tip. If your background is a solid, you don't have matter. you don't there have to worry. No other, my, no yeah, sides. mine is that way. You yeah. don't have to think about it. At exactly. All. Then you can just keep them all stacked and you just move it whichever yeah. way you want. But when you have mm -hmm. a print, you do need to keep and it sorted. And when you have this print, why wouldn't you use this? Print? Exactly. It's, so cute. it's, it's so just cute. so cute. I was cute. tempted to use it with mine too. I, I know. Love I love it. It's so happy. And so now that we have our cutting done, we can just pair these up with our little periwinkles in the middle. Again, we're going to line up that notch. And so we'll fold it over and this will meet and it will hang over the top. And that's how you want it. That's right. correct. So you're looking Perfect. to make sure that bottom that, notch lines up. Exactly. Perfectly. All right. And do you want to give me more? Are we sure. making can, one? Absolutely. Are we making a whole block? I, we can make a whole block. So let's just chain piece one after the other. All right. I just, I mean, I didn't want to overstay. You no, know, you're yes. good. I'm I, happy to sew all I do on. have some done, but we might as well show how quick Work. this goes together. Yeah, yeah. and I love the matching up the notch because yep. we used to match up like at the top. Yeah. And then it was like, wait, do I have enough? Is it too small? Is it too big? And now it's like, put the notch on. And it just yeah. works out. There we go. So That's one we side. Can cut those apart. And Natalie, if you could press these Absolutely. open. Absolutely. Oh, and I can get you a little scissor too. I have in my little dish. That's all right. I got it. Here we go. And so, so then now, on that. same thing. That notch is going to go at the bottom, lining it up with the straight side, and we'll add that on. And on this side, I'm actually going to sew from the notch. From up. the notch. Oh, perfect. I don't know why. That's um, how I do it too. Yes. If, if you put it together and you're sewing it and it feels weird to you, flip, just flip, flip it, it the over. other way yep. because your brain will go, ah, when you get it, you know, you yep. get it how your brain likes it. All righty. And so here we go. Here's this The nice one. thing about the notch too is it helps you keep them going the right direction because it's a triangle. You could very easily put it on, yes. on the wrong side and then have your triangle leg like flipped up or something. And, and so the notch helps keep everything neat and going tidy. the right direction, lined up really well. All right. And there's no squaring after. Like, they're just perfect. Yep. I love it. All right. Let's press those. Those look really good. All right. So now that we have these four ready to go, we can just put them together and we match up those periwinkles in the middle. Just like so. They're Aww. just so cute. So cute. So we'll I just fold them, them together. So Back to my sewing. Back to my sewing. So I Down recommend sewing from the middle out. Yeah, that's the way I do I it do as too. well. Because I don't like starting with the two the, little points. That sharp point. I agree. Mm -hmm. Working from the middle is the best. Although yeah. technically you have to. I mean, you don't have to, but it you do that at least at one point. Right. You put them back together. It's true. But if you can avoid it. I just it, say, do well, it as easy as you can until you can't. Yes. <laughs> well, and also, I like to match where the, the, color, where the, yep. the color block starts with the legs. That's yes. the one spot you got to line right. up. And so we've got those done. Now we and can open them up, give them a I've press. Made, I've made a lot of periwinkle quilts, and they don't always line up. And mostly you can't tell. They're pretty forgiving. Very That's true. forgiving. Yeah. When you stand back from it, it's not like a big, obvious issue. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Well, and it's, you know, it's just it's one a of those tiny things where space. nobody get, ever, ever so given a quilt cute. back to me because it wasn't. Well, perfect. and if they do, they're not your friends. No. No, mm -hmm. not at all. All right. So we've got those two halves. To give it to someone else. And we'll sew those together. Now, when you start on a little point like that, um, if you have a plate here that just has the single hole in it, it will not grab your fabric. But if it has the long slit, it could yeah. grab your fabric. And an easy way to avoid that is to come and start in a little bit and then start in and then just back, back. up to that point and then keep going. It's a the great other tip. thing I do is um, if I have, I hold the threads. Yes. So often they I will just hold the threads behind it and kind of make sure that they're taut so that the machine can't pull them back in. Yeah, that's a great tip so if too. So if you grab them with your little we finger. We have all the ways. So the ways. many tricks. Oh my goodness, there it's it is. It's so cute. It's so cute. I love it so much. Pretty soon you'll have a little oh stack my gosh, of them. I love them. They're just And darling. they're just so happy. I just love them and so no much. And no papers at all. No papers. And so let's talk about the layout. It should be nine by nine, nine across by nine down, and it finishes like 49, 49 and a half inches yep. square. And I didn't add a border on this, but you easily could. 
And I use these little hearts oh, for the, the backing. That quilting pattern is yeah. so cute. Yep, it just works perfect Baptist for fans. it. Baptist yes, fan. Baptist so fan. Yeah. I love it. One I think of those it's, good old traditional patterns that it's looks perfect. great on everything. Exactly. Yeah. I think so too. So super quick and easy. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I think Nat, you're up next. All right. There we go. Well, hey, Natalie, I guess it's your turn. All right. So my quilt is back here behind it's us. So happy. So clever. I decided to call it Periwinkle Party, and it combines the periwinkle block with the a mid -size. different block, a second block. So I'm going to show you how to do it. It's really fun. I used a dark background, which I love, and I just think it came out really cool. That's awesome. It's it looks great. Cool. It's fun. And there's, there's it's just so different. I love how you come up with things because it's like not mine are like block, block, block. Yours are like, whoa. I like party. to add secondary blocks yeah. and see what happens. It's fun. It's the periwinkle it's fun party. With that second block. Yeah. yeah. All right. So to make my quilt, you're going to need one package of 10 inch print squares. And I've used Tiny Beasts by Tula Pink for free spirit fabrics. You'll need quite a bit of background, four and three quarter yards. Um, and then for the backing, it's kind of a large quilt. It's 68 by 85. So you'll need five and a quarter yards of a 45, or if you use a 108, two and a quarter yards is okay. what you'll need. You'll also need your periwinkle template and your periwinkle leg template nice. as well. And then um, I would suggest a marking pencil because we have dark fabric, we're gonna use like a, a, a white pencil. Um, I did also use a silver permanent marker. Oh, perfect. Which works great. And all these marks are going to be inside the seam. So you, it doesn't really matter if it, and you depends, want it to show up. That depends on the color of your background. Right. If because you have if a you light a background, white, a regular pen or a, pencil yeah. is fine. But if you have a dark one, you're going to want something white or light that shows up. Perfect. So, um, and the silver Sharpie is perfect for that, really. It's so easy to use. Yeah. yeah. But we'll use this today. All, all right. right. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start by cutting several um, nine inch strips and five inch strips. We'll do the nines first. Oh, there it is. So, and I like to just figure that out real quick. A nine inch and a five inch. And you'll need a few of these, right? Yeah, several, yeah. several of each one. Okay, we've got four. Let me in. have that, I'll fold that up. Okay. <laughs> I'm good at folding. All right, so I'm gonna cut these to nine inch squares. And you can really only get four out of your strip no matter how you cut them. So I'm just gonna leave it folded for speed. Oops. Okay, and we'll set these aside. All right, so we've got those ready to go. And then we're gonna cut from our background the periwinkle template. And this is the new the leg. leg. The leg, sorry, yeah. the leg template. This is the new leg for the, uh, I'm gonna, the, the well, I'm it's gonna a small size because we have mini and small. Yep. Um, I've always called this medium or, you know. Yeah, it's but the, it's, it's the middle size. It is what it is, right? Right. And we have the leg that matches. Yep, and you can cut these going either direction because um, you have, Solid background fabric, so it doesn't matter. You just need You're both sides. Flip it you will you always need. get them. So I'm just going to cut a few of these. And I don't know how yours is put together, so I don't know how many you're considering in a block, but you need two for each periwinkle middle. Yes. Two legs for each middle. Yep, and you can just scoot that right into that corner. It's very efficient yeah, such use of little fabric. Waste. I love that. So we don't need very many to make the first, um, to make this block, although you will want to cut all of yours ahead of time. It just makes it go so much quicker. All right, so now that we've got our background pieces cut, I'm going to show you what to do with your print squares. We're going to divide it in half, and that is just for cutting. So it doesn't matter if they're lights or darks. You just want to do 20 that go one direction and 20 that go the other direction. So. What we'll do, I have two here. We're gonna, for all of these, um, all of your 10 inch print squares, you're gonna cut them in half. And then this half is going to be periwinkles. So you can fold that. This one right here is what I need. 
and you've got plenty of room to just center it up so all of your edges are straight. I'm so interested to see how you do this. <laughs> it's pretty fun. It goes together pretty easily with a little bit of planning, but that's it. Okay, so you've got half of those. And then um, the reason that you'll separate them in half is because one set of your legs needs to be cut uh, going towards the left and the other towards the right. So we will cut and set these into separate piles. And that is just to make it easier to cover the square. If you had to cut them all one direction, if you just forgot, I mean, I did it that way initially, so it's not impossible. It's just easier to cut them going opposite directions. That so that's how we wrote the pattern. So you will keep these in separate piles um, just for your nine inch squares. For your sanity. For your, for your sanity, <laughs> yes, absolutely, okay. So what we're gonna do is first we're gonna make our little periwinkle block and the block you're looking for looks like this. And I know that these are different than how that. Misty put hers together. We just put the long side and, works, and ended up with a little block. It's beautiful. nine inch square. So I will let you stitch these. That's and it's the same, same as with Misty's little ones. We're gonna line them up, match that notch at the bottom. It's gonna have a little bit of overhang at the top. That gives you your plenty of room for your quarter inch seam and then no squaring. Okay. I'll give you a second one. And you do one on each and side, they can be Yep, one on each side. They can be lined up any which way as long as the notch matches the bottom. And here is our, we'll, we'll press them and then let her do the other side. There we go. <laughs> These look almost identical. There you go. And press to the dark side. Press to the dark. To the dark. That hides your seam. Especially when you're using and a dark here's background. Here's the second one, and that lines up just right. Just like yours, just bigger. Just bigger. So a little bit faster, I would think. <laughs> Definitely. Now you so can actually put these back. together exactly like Misty's put put hers together and make you a big can, block. But it but that you doesn't won't work for this quilt. To get right. This look. Right. So it's just a different look. Yeah. Sure. Guy. Trim it. There's that. Trim it off. Here's that one. All right. All right, so you'll, you're gonna line these up and stitch that center seam. On the long side this time. That's right. Love it. Just tuck that under and I wish you the luck. The best It's gonna part. be great. <laughs> Just gonna watch this little guy. Are you, do yeah. you try to match up the points? I or? do try. It doesn't always work out okay. perfectly and it, and it doesn't matter that much. Okay. They do, they do meet, but like these meet perfect. These aren't perfect. And it's so fine. these, these two match up perfectly. And these two are just a little bit off. But when you step back and look at the whole quilt, you can't tell. Not yeah. Really it doesn't stand it. out as a big deal. So don't stress about it. No, this is one where it's the pattern. It's the yeah. overall pattern. That's really breathtaking. Yeah. How'd I do? Did all right. Did all right. <laughs> all right. All right. So you'll ahead. do that with all of your periwinkle blocks and get half of your blocks made just like that. Just like this. That's beautiful. It's so good. I love it. Okay. So with your nine inch background squares, this is the tricky part. And this should and be I, the, the nine inch is the same size. It's as the this. same okay. size. Yep. Perfect. See, these are, I'm just making sure. These end at nine. And so your background squares are Perfect. cut to the same size. So this is where it gets just a little bit tricky, but don't stress. It's not a big deal. What we're going to do is we're going to put points on this block so that they will look like this one right here. This is our secondary block. I love it. Okay. Which is a very periwinkly looking block. It <laughs> is very periwinkly looking. But to make it with the supplies that we have and to make it fit our periwinkle, um, our other periwinkle block, yes. we need to measure from the corner in three and one quarter inches. Okay. okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark these two opposite corners 
three and a quarter inches in on all of those. Right yep, on all of those corners. And I, oops, I just went through and did the whole thing, um, the whole stack, and then took them over to my sewing machine and stitched. And it's the, it's like you did, just, just for my brain, so, you decide that this is the top half of your square, both the lines are going to be on that. Side. That's right. And I kept, okay. I just kept my whole pile oriented like this. And honestly, you could like do the whole stack, like um, this is how I, I did it quickly. So I just line up with the top. It's going to be, oh, this pencil is falling apart. Um, I highly, highly recommend these silver Sharpie markers. Those are the best. <laughs> that is so dreamy to work with. But what you can do is do that and then just fold your, fold your fabric back and go through the whole stack that way. There you go. So you're just marking. One after the other. One after the other. Do your whole pile. It's three and a quarter inches on both corners. Oh, that's two. There we go. Yeah. There we go. And you just need to make a mark that you can see. Okay. So once you get your markings on, then it's time to add your legs. So I usually start with the right side. I think because I'm right-handed, probably. Probably, yeah. And and you'll right. notice that this side is a little bit shorter than your middle. So the middle is the part that you're going to want to stretch across the middle. Okay. You want to make sure your point covers the bottom. And then I usually leave just a, a, at least like an inch overhang at the top. Okay. You line that up so that it's just right on the side of your, um, of your marking. And then what happens is you have this quarter inch seam that comes in. Okay. Let's do it. And it matches up with your periwinkle. And the quarter inch doesn't have to be perfect because you are going to square these. Nope. You're not going to square them. It you don't cut. The, I mean, you don't cut the extra off. We do cut the extra off, okay. but you do want your seam to be pretty close because you're trying to make it match up with this periwinkle. So what we're trying to achieve here is these oh, two is pieces okay. lining up. When you lay it next to it itself, you'll see that this is a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. and that is because when you put them together, they cross going opposite oh, here, directions, and and your quarter inch seam covers that yeah by that squaring by squaring i was thinking about all of this yeah i yeah. wasn't thinking all about of that your, comes your off, measurement in but yeah you're you're not squaring these blocks down from the nine inches all righty okay. all right okay so this other side is going to come in on this side and you can um, chain piece all of these i did all of my right sides first pressed them back and then i did my left sides okay. and then i did all the cutting at once after okay so Again, cross that over. And this point, you don't really have to worry about. It doesn't really match up with anything. If they're not exactly, you know, centered, no big deal. Okay. So that's the ah part of this. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. And and one other thing to note, like you'll see right here, this edge is just a tiny bit off. You can see the gray underneath. Mm -hmm. If it's within a quarter of an inch, it's gonna get caught in the seam and it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So no stress there either. All right, we're going to line that up, making sure we have a good almost an inch up there. Okay. And that's just to make sure it'll fold the, to back. To make and sure cover, it covers right? the, the corner. Okay. If you, if you flip your fabric back and it hasn't covered it, just pick it off and, and scoot it up a little bit and try again. No biggie. It's one of those things where it's like you're eyeballing it. If it doesn't work, do it over or just do another one. So I press that. Yes, please. There we go. Awesome. All right. So now we're going to flip it over and trim off that extra fabric. And I do a little, I just stick it into the corner Maybe like you that. Your square is the template. So that, yeah, your square is the template because it's already cut to the nine inches. And I like to do um, at least two cuts at once if I can. Yeah, that makes sense. So I don't have to, don't have to turn it so many times, you know. All right, then you're gonna flip it back where it's right sides up. Pull this piece back because you don't wanna cut off that, but you do want to cut off your back um, foundation fabric because it gets bulky in the mm -hmm, seams. Mm -hmm. You can leave it if you want to. I just choose not to. Yep. <laughs> so she's living personal, on the edge. She personal preference. living on the edge right there. I don't know. I think the people who I was going to say, I think it's because awesome. you're, <laughs> you're sewing through like four pieces of fabric. So many layers. All right. And that's it. That is all there is to making this quilt. You Then you're ready to put it together. Um, it goes in a little pattern of a periwinkle, 
and then two of your legs, periwinkle, periwinkle. It just, you know. Yeah. So this block is up here, whoop, way up there. And then this block meets up with it. Okay. So it is very scrappy. So you can join a few of these together if you want to, but I recommend laying it out so you know where everything goes and how you want it you to can look. You play with it, yeah. Yep. And then these go together just one right next to the other. Now, do you do a block or do you do a row? I do. I did rows when I put okay. it together, but um, there probably there probably are blocks that you could do to make it come together quicker if that's what you wanted to do. This is you one of those. This? If you like, yes. This is one of those where great. I feel like it's like this optical illusion. It's you know, so it's, yeah. it's I had to find the periwinkle in it, figure out what you were doing with it. I just yep. think it's very cool. I just laid it out and then sewed the rows. Right. So this one goes this way and this one goes. They line up just oh, like yeah. this. Oh yeah, oh this one line. This is the line you're looking for. Okay, yep. that, that helps me. There we go. Yes. Ooh, Misty, look at how See? nice. So then, and then we'll put this one here. Okay. And each row is slightly different just because you've got, you know, your, your periwinkles going in different directions. Right. So. I just love how it circles. But ah. they join together pretty The patterns easily. are very cool. All the secondary little things. Yeah. yeah. I love them. Yeah, you end up with quite a bit of fabric down there at that point, yeah, which is I why I, say, I highly recommend just cutting, it off, gets cutting off as much as you can. So then we would have another one here that lines up just like that. It's beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and Super fun. You want to do one more? Sure. Just, to, just so we can, I can hold it up and yep. show it. Absolutely. Okay. All right. All right. Let so let's press this. that open. Or not open, but back. Press yeah, it back. Press it flat. You can you press go. your seams open if you want to to reduce bulk on this one. That's just personal preference. So you'll just go along and keep doing these yep, along yep. The, for the rows. And let me show you how it comes together as you put them. You line them up. It just looks so cute. I love it, Natalie. It's really so you'll do fun. that. Then you'll have another one of these here. Here's oh yeah. Oh, and another leg. Yeah. Okay. So you'll have you have two sets of legs, and then you'll have two sets of periwinkles and Okay. Know. Okay. And then on the edges, you have just like one to round it off. So we have eight blocks across by 10 down. So that makes this quilt about 68 Six. by 85. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. And the machine quilting pattern on this is time warp. And I went with kind of a medium gray thread. I wanted it to blend a little bit on the lighter fabrics and, um, and Let's then see that back. this is our backing, and I absolutely <laughs> love it. It's oh, that's so that. pretty. That's really pretty. Beautiful. Yep. And that's it. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have fun with it. It's, it's such a new, it's fresh pretty idea. Creative yeah. It's and, really, and interesting. really beautiful. And it's my turn. Let's, All right. Let's go. <laughs> so it's my turn, and I am doing something completely different. So Misty did a while ago a quilt called Periwinkle Squared. Yes. yes. And it was this periwinkle right here, just the outside of it. And we were teaching it at a Doan Girls retreat. Yep. And one of the gals put this periwinkle, a and second periwinkle in the center. And I just fell in love with it. And so rather than doing the leg, I'm going to do this one and show you how to do it with just the periwinkle ruler. And so if you have it, this is another fun idea. It's quick and easy and you're going to love it. So to make my quilt, you're going to need one packet of 10 inch squares. And I've used this Tula Pink True Colors Neon. I just went wild. The neons are so yep. fun. And then you're going to need some uh, background fabric. And I wanted to go with a linen-y or something like that. Yes. And I had this backing. Mm -hmm. And the backing is Carolyn Friedlander's Crosshatch, it's you know. Beautiful. Yeah. And so it's 108. And so I used this as my background fabric. And so if you have a 108, it's one and a half yards. And um, and then this is my border right here, which is just a mirror of her smaller print with the birds in it. She enlarged that. So this is going to be a nice big six inch border. You can see out here. So it's got that neon look to it. And then guys, look at the binding. So, oh, cute. so this stripe. is the binding right here. They had a little stripe with the line. I went with it. It's and so cute. your binding is three quarters of a yard. And then this is the backing. Now the backing is also the same bird print, only it's multicolored. I and, love it. And it's a mirror. 
it's a mirror of the tiny one. The little background use. I use. So too often does that. She'll take one of her little prints and she'll make it big for the backing. So let's take a look at this That's back. That's so great. Oh, it's look so how fun pretty. that is. I love it. I also use the time warp quilting pattern. Yep. Um, it comes great. together so nice. I used a medium gray thread as well. Uh, of course, my backing is gray. And this makes a quilt that is, here, Misty, can you fold this of up? Of course. Quilt sizes are so similar. They're <laughs> it's so 65 close. by 83. You're also going to need your small periwinkle template. And it's super helpful to have a five inch squaring ruler because that's what we're going to square these two at the end of the day. Perfect. All right. So let me show you how to make this. Now, each block is made up of three 10 inch squares. You're going to have two that, two 10 inch squares that match and one for the middle. Okay. So you're going to just want to be aware of your colors as you're choosing them. And so I've got two here that I pulled out earlier. And um, like Natalie, I just like to fold mine in fourths like this and cut my periwinkle right out of the middle. I don't worry too much because there's a little bit of give, so I don't worry too now much you about. yours up. So. There's just yeah, uh, plenty of extra room. Yeah, I don't press. I don't, you know, I don't worry too much of it. Now this is, this is like uh, eight layers. I was gonna layers. say, you're going through a lot there. Yeah. yeah. So if you're, uh, if you need a really sharp blade or you need somebody hey, with a stronger shoulder hard, to cut. If it's hard, just um, cut through less layers. That's right. And Be you can, safe. the other thing you can do with this is you can cut it in half both directions. Oh yeah. And then just work with individual squares because not everybody loves to cut layers, you know? Right. I found that out. I think that's, that's a yeah. true thing. Everybody um, has preferences that are different. It's not true for me, but, uh, but it is true. All right. So we've got these and then we'll need our periwinkles for our middle. And so this is going to feel like going through butter now because <laughs> I went through it so much, yep. so much thicker before. All right, so we're getting up here like this. Open my blade. Oh, Natalie, on one of our earlier tutorials, you said how you like back up a little bit uh -huh. and go forward. And I've been trying that and it's quite handy, I must say. Yeah, it's like you just go back. That first little notch. Because that's where my threads usually stick together. Yeah, they get caught. Also, if you have a rotating mat, this is a great time Super to helpful. use it. All right. So now we should have eight of these and four of these. And then we, we're gonna put little strips on the side to make this a square. And so what I did was I cut a strip that was five and a half inches wide right here uh, on my backing. And then I just came along and I cut two inches off of it. So we're gonna cut two inch strips and you're gonna need two for each one of these. And so we're just going to come along here and cut two inches. Now, did you see I almost cut two and a half? I'm very used to cutting the width. two and a half. Is, yep. Yeah. This Standard. the width of this ruler. Which, so. if you did, it would be okay. You would just have more waste. And yeah. Well, and you may um, not have quite enough fabric, fabric if you've right. gotten exactly the amount right. you need for the project. That's exactly. So right. I have some more cut over here, and we're pretty much have all the things that we need to cut. So Natalie, we're I'm going to have you sew. And I'm gonna have you sew this little strip right here is gonna go right along the edge. Okay. Now you can match this up or just leave a tiny bit up there, but I'm pretty sure that we just match those up. Is that right? Yep, you just wanna- I'd the, overhang it by like a- You only need a quarter inch at the top, you need the extra at the bottom. Oh, yeah. yep. so we're overhanging this a quarter? Yep, yeah, just, just enough. I think I matched those up. Oh, really? Yeah. So I found if you just- work either way. Yeah, it'll be fine. You just need Because we are that, squaring it. Exactly, you okay. just need the extra on the bottom side. All right. Yeah, so when I sew and make things, I literally, I'm just wrote, I just go, go. And so then all of a sudden I'm like, wait, where did I put that, you know? But I'm pretty sure that I, I thought I just lined them up, but I'm, you know, we're gonna square them up anyway. Exactly. So right. And then I'm gonna have you, Misty, press these. Of course. You can, you can move this. Okay. And I'm gonna clip right. these off so Misty can start pressing. Awesome. And we're just going to keep feeding them through you to you. Okay. Are we doing eight for the outside or? I've already the done the eight ones? for the outside. So these are just the inside ones that oh, are left. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. Because they're all made the same. And you can yes. see this right here. When we put this second leg on here, now I'm calling it a leg 
but it's really a strip because we're not using the leg template on That's this. Right. We're just putting strips. And so we're going to put on here and you can see that? how far that comes down. And so oh, we're nice. just going to. And again, you want to make sure that it just, just covers the point, right? Like yep. by it over. Just, just barely covers it. A little it. bit. Because yep. you need the fabric at the base. So I always love it when we're uh, at retreat and somebody sees the pattern that we're doing and they make it more. That's the best part. I it's so fun. I love it when that happens. We'll be there talking. I also love to see all the patterns in different fabrics. In different fabrics. Oh, yes. Exactly. Because that can change so, so much how the quilt looks. But we'll be at a Joan Girl retreat and we'll be talking and one of us will go, oh, look, look at that. that. <laughs> yeah. you so know. Cool. We get so excited about it because yes. it's like they've taken what we've done you know, that is never an insult because we're all about oh, what no. happens Absolutely. If. It's the best part. Honestly, I think it's like the ultimate compliment. It really yeah. is. Yeah. Anyway, we were so tickled with what she'd done that I wanted to just share it with you and show you guys how to do it. So I'm actually calling this, what did I name this you one? You called it double periwinkle. The double periwinkle. Yeah. So um, it, the first one is periwinkle squared. Yep. And you can watch Misty make that. And then this is the double periwinkle. And so... Uh, here you go, girl. Perfect. And then what we're gonna do, now we have this little periwinkle right here, and this is gonna be our inside. And we're going to square this to, to I just put it, I'm like, where did yeah. I put that ruin? <laughs> we're gonna square this to five inches. Now you wanna square in the point. So your point here is gonna go in that tip right here. And you're gonna make sure it's lined up on the sides of this on the point, just like that. And then we're just gonna trim off these sides right here. So we're gonna trim here and here like that. And then we're gonna turn this around and trim the other side, always keeping this to the corner. All right. And so I'm gonna do this to all of them. And you'll do it to all of yours as well, including, I mean, just everyone. All right. So all your blocks are gonna to go together in twos like this. So we're gonna sew them all together Point, just like this. Points to the middle? Points to the small point in. outside. Yeah, small point in. Okay. All right, so you're I gonna go this it. way. And then this one is the same. We're gonna go this way and we're gonna put them in like this. You're gonna have your outsides done. Yep, well, I have my outsides done and I have a block done so we can look at the block. Awesome. So and oh, iron that middle. Of course. They've been folded up in a bag. So all of them are sewn exactly the same way. You just put them together and sew them. And it doesn't matter if it's narrow to wide or wide to narrow. They just go together. And uh, we're going to press these open. Okay. And then I want to show you how it all works when we lay it all out. All right. One. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right, so I want to show you that even the outside, so here are these sewn together like this, and even the outside ones are sewn just the same. It's super easy. So when you put these together, though, you're going to put your points together in the middle like this. Just match them up. And then these are going to go all the way around the outside, and they're going to go small points in. So you're matching these to these. I mean, large points in, which I guess it's whichever end you think of as the small point, yeah. but they come in like this. The big part comes in. So it makes this V like this. Sort of like a lava lamp. Yeah. Oh, the lava lamp. And then you have four or five inch squares that you cut for your corners that go out here like this. And so for me, when I'm sewing this together, what made it go really fast was I... I, you know, I trimmed all my squares and then I knew I had sewed them all the same for every yeah. block. And then we went to put it together. So you can sew the end on both of these. Okay. And this sewing will take a minute to put together. But literally, I want to talk about a few things about this because when you have a nice big block like this, there's a lot of things that you can do with this. This doesn't necessarily have to be a quilt. Of course. You know, we've made a quilt with three across and one, two, three, four down. So 12 big blocks we got out of our thing. So that means we used 36 blocks because we used three layer cakes for each one. 
But think if you wanted to put this, like make a bed runner and yep. just make three or four of these and put it on the end of your bed because you, you know, you have a beautiful spread and you just want to put a bed runner over it or a table runner. This is going to make a great table runner. Even just one of these blocks in the middle with a few borders would be for, great for a square or a round table. Or a baby yeah. quilt. Or a baby quilt. I mean, so four good. of these together would be a baby. Perfect baby And quilt. then also here, you're going to have to sew these two together before you sew the ends on. Okay. And then also on this, um, I mean, we're talking the cutest pillows ever known yes, to mankind. Yes, it's so true. I mean, just sew so a backing on this. <laughs> yes. And this becomes a pillow. And so I just love big blocks because there's no, uh, there's just so many things you can do with them. And so, um, well, and once you get to that point, it's also so exciting because you know the quilt's going to come together so quickly with so those quickly. big blocks. Yes. Yeah. All right. So then this one goes here and this one goes here. You're making that, remember we're making the diamonds. And so this is our, let me put the, put my block back together. This is up here. And when I speak of diamonds, I'm talking about this one right here that occurs when you put the blocks together. And there is a bit of fabric where that all comes together right there. Yeah. But, you know, that's all right. It wasn't any trouble for me. <laughs> And you can just lay those seams, one going one way and one going the other, and they'll just nest up real nice. I just wanna make sure that I get those periwinkles together. There you go. Yeah, so when she's sewing along, she's actually matching this first seam right here, the middle seam, and the next seam as well. And then she can fly right on down. And then if you'll sew these ends to this one. Okay. There you go. And then Misty, you can press this one. I'll move some of these things out of the way for you. I have enough right there to make a whole nother block. I'm gonna do something. So here's our middle. And you can see how the diamonds come together. And it matches up pretty easily. This is not, this is a pretty low stress block. So we're gonna fold this on here. She'll match this seam, she'll catch this one, this one, this one, and that one. And as you do that and you sew along, it's really nice because it keeps everything all lined up. It just, it, it just it's, I like all those little checkpoints as I you go along. I do too. Mm -hmm. It just keeps you on track. Well, and when you don't have the checkpoints, often I get to the end and there's like this much yes. extra and I'm like, what did I do there? Where did that How come did from? that happen? Yep. Yeah. And probably it does glow in the dark. I haven't tried it. I was going to say, but I, if you put a black light on it, the neons would glow. Oh, I'll that bet would be you. so I have fun. a quilt at home that you made me, yeah, um, the that. Halloween one. Yeah. And I walked past it the other night on my way upstairs and it was glowing in the oh, dark. I love that. It was so funny. I love That's that. That's awesome. And I've had it for a couple of years now, I yeah. think. So it's that glow in the dark is still going strong. Here That's go. so cool. All right, hold on to this, Misty. Okay. Here, Natalie, hold We've on to this. got three. Okay. All right, here we go, girls. Together, <laughs> come together. We're a table runner. <gasps> what? We're a bed Look runner. That. Look at us. Yay. We're three pillows on the couch. Or you're going to make 12 of these, and you're going to put them together, and it's going to be a beautiful block so on your quilt cute. right here. It's just gorgeous. Really fun. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed this triple play, and we'll see you again next month. Bye, everybody. Hey everybody, every week I give you a new idea and we are almost 1 million quilters strong. So join us every Friday for a new tutorial. And if you haven't clicked or subscribed, make sure you do that today. See you on Friday.